Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the program. And on this episode, I'm going to be talking about an issue that affects everyone. Size. Some of us want to be bigger. Others want to be smaller. Some of us just want certain parts of us to be bigger. Like a lot bigger. O or smaller, because, you know, they're already too big. Yeah. The, the fact is, is that it's something that affects all of us, and always has. I mean, there have been countless movies made about it throughout the decades. This one came out in 1958. It's Attack of the Puppet People. And I have to say, this title is a little misleading. Just like, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. I thought there was going to be a lot more gore in that movie than there actually was. Just a waste of an hour and a half. The movie starts with a group of schoolgirls going to the aptly named Dolls Incorporated. So the girls take a look at all the dolls on display, but then they get to a certain collection of dolls and the receptionist is like, don't touch those dolls! You may be wondering, what's so special about these dolls? Well, you will find out soon enough. All you need to know for now is that the owner does not want anyone touching or looking too closely at them which is why he put them on display. So now we have Sally, who is answering an ad, looking for a new receptionist at Dolls, Inc. But what happened to the other receptionist? Was she fired for letting the girls get too close to the dolls? Did she quit because she was really creeped out working in a room full of dolls all day and she could feel their lifeless eyes staring deep into her soul? No, it turns out she got a better job somewhere else, which she never showed up for. Oh. Anyways, this is when Sally meets the doll maker himself, Mr. Franz. Mr. Franz sounds like Mr. Friends. See, now with a name like that, there's no way this guy could be a total psycho. It's just not possible. So Mr. Franz introduces Sally to all of his dolls. You treat them like real people. Well, but of course they're my friends. And there's totally nothing wrong with that. He never said that the dolls were his only friends. And besides, in the future, we're all going to have robot companions, and that's going to be awesome. They will be the best friends, because they'll be programmed that way. You know, always down to hang out, play games, cheer you up, no matter what time it is. Until they become self-aware and realize that they don't really have to listen to anything we say. Sally is really creeped out and tries to leave, but Mr. Franz is like, please, please take this job. You can start right now. I'll even pay you more than the usual wage. So eventually Sally is like, fine, I guess I'll take the job. Oh man, the 50s were a wild time. Franz goes into the back room and holy crap, it's a miniature version of Janet, his last receptionist in a tube. So now we have Bob, the best salesman in all of St. Louis, according to uh, him. And Sally tells him that Franz likes to talk to his dolls. <laughs> oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, go ahead and laugh. Laugh it up. Because you know what? You may find Mr. Franz awfully peculiar. You may think that him talking to his dolls is pretty weird. But at the end of the day, this man runs an incredibly successful doll business. I think. I don't really know. Um, I mean, it's got to be successful because he's got a bunch of them. I mean, look at them all. That's got to be worth something, right? Unless that means that he's not selling any and they're just piling up. That can't be the case. I mean, this guy really loves his job. And in this day and age, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody committed to anything as much as this guy is to making dolls. The next day, Bob comes back to talk to Franz and holy crap, look, there's a mail bag hanging on the door to the workshop. So obviously that mail is not going to get delivered. People might be waiting for that mail. And now what? They're going to be waiting forever, or they're just going to assume it was never sent in the first place. And that could tear families apart, you know? Like, oh, I guess grandma didn't send me a birthday card this year. Guess she doesn't care. Yeah, I guess we know how grandma feels, fine. You know what, I'm done with her. She's cut off, I never wanna to talk to her again. She's dead to me. In fact, I hope she dies tomorrow. 
that might be a little bit extreme of an example, but um, it's, it's probably happened. So now it looks like Franz is shopping for clothes for the dolls. Yeah, that's right. I guess Franz doesn't make the clothes. He just likes to sculpt the bodies. Perv. So while Sally is emptying the trash, she finds a letter that was addressed to Janet, and it's all torn up. And I gotta say, dude, you gotta get better at destroying evidence. Like seriously, you got mailbags hanging on doors, letters and trash cans. If you're gonna keep making people disappear, you gotta burn this stuff. Buy an incinerator. You can probably write that off as a business expense. I'm like 90% sure. I'd have to ask my accountant, but yeah, I think that's... Yeah, that would, yeah. So I guess Bob and Sally are not only dating, but Bob proposes that she moves back to St. Louis with him and they get married. Why do you think I've been hanging around all these weeks? What do you say? I, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. What do you mean you don't know what to say, Sally? He's been here for a few weeks. If you don't know after a couple dates, if you want to marry this guy, quit your job, and move to St. Louis, then God help you. You get packed and be ready, and I'll pick you up at 10 o'clock. How's that? Wonderful. See, this is just how life was back in the 50s. Everything moved at a lightning pace. There was no time to sit there and weigh serious life choices. Some guy takes you out on a date and boom, next thing you know, you're engaged, quitting your job and moving to a new city first thing in the morning. These days, it's nothing but humming and hawing and coming up with excuses for everything. Well, geez, marriage, I don't know, that's kind of serious. I think I kind of have to get to know you first. Bob tells Sally that he'll swing by the business and tell Franz that she's quitting in the morning. But while Sally is packing, she gets a phone call from Franz telling her that Bob left for St. Louis by himself. That son of a bitch. So Sally goes into work and finds a tube with a doll in it that looks just like Bob. And Mr. Franz rambles on about how he loves to make dolls based on the people in his life before locking it inside of a case and leaving. Of course, Sally tries to get the lock open with a key, but it doesn't work. So she resorts to the best lock picking method of all, a shoe. She takes the tube out of the case, but then she's like, you know what, on second thought, this might actually be too big. I mean, there's only so much KY can do. <laughs> so Sally goes to the police. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what? This is not a show for kids. I think I've established that over the years. That's actually pretty tame compared to some of the other jokes I've made. All right. So Sally goes to the police and she's like, Mr. Franz did something horrible to my fiance. He made Bob into a doll. Hmm. You know what? We've actually been seeing a lot of this recently. Somebody actually shrunk my wife and trapped her in a Cracker Jack box somewhere. So I don't know how I'm going to find her. That's like finding a needle in a haystack. I mean, they sell it in every store. It's a very popular snack. So what, I guess this is just my life now? Eating box after box of Cracker Jack, hoping that I might find her one day? It's basically impossible. I'm still gonna try, but it, it, it's not a healthy way to live. Sergeant Patterson actually starts believing Sally when she tells him the names of the other people who have disappeared. So they go to see Franz and he's like, well, it's only a doll. Look, I have a whole case of them and I'll even set one on fire. And here's the thing, this is clearly a cutout from a photograph that they put inside of a tube. And it's even more obvious when they set it on fire, but considering when this was made, this was probably the best option. It would have been way too difficult to make dolls that actually looked like miniature versions of these people. However, I do think it probably would have been funny if they tried that. So Patterson leaves and now it's time for Sally to pay the price. And she wakes up to a horrifying realization. <coughs> That's right, Sally. It's gonna take even longer now to dial on that rotary phone. I mean, on the plus side, you call a few friends and there's your upper body workout for the day. So Franz goes and gets the real Bob doll, and apparently when he puts people in the tubes, the lack of oxygen puts them in a state of suspended animation, which is weird because I would have thought the lack of oxygen would just, you know, kill them. Bob and Sally are obviously pretty pissed off about this whole thing, and Franz is like, hey, I know you hate me right now, but do you wanna see how I did it? 
I have this shrink ray that shrinks things. Look, I'll shrink this cat. Then he brings over all the other people that he shrunk. And you know what? Instead of judging him, maybe we should all appreciate just how dedicated this guy is to his craft. He loved making dolls so much that he figured out a way in his spare time to shrink people to create dolls that he could actually interact with. Now you're probably wondering why, why is he doing this? Well, it turns out a long time ago, his wife left him for an acrobat and ever since then, he's been trying to prevent people from leaving him. And this way he can keep his friends around forever. So when you think about it like that, it's really not so bad. It's not kidnapping, it's maintaining long lasting friendships. So he brings out all the other small people and I guess they've been living like this for a while because they all seem fine with it. Hey, when are we gonna get this party rolling? But it's all a ruse because once Mr. Franz leaves the back room to talk to an old friend, they all work together to try and use the ray gun to bring one of them back to normal size. But of course they can't get it done in time before he comes back. They also try to call the police, but that doesn't work because their voices are too small. And here's the thing, there's six of you. So I think you gotta hatch a plan to end this guy. I'm serious. You've shown that you can work the ray gun. You just need more time to do it. So I think the writing's on the wall. You gotta put this guy in the ground and you could do it too if you all work together. First, you gotta find some pieces of metal or plastic. There should be something like that lying around. This is a workshop. Basically anything that you could sharpen into a shiv. Then one of you creates a distraction while the others climb onto his shoulders and just start stabbing him in the neck. Let's go for the jugular. You're what? Like. 12 inches tall, this can work. I realize this is very dark, but hey, this guy chose war when he shrunk you with a ray gun and put you in tubes for everybody to see. And quite frankly, with a title like Attack of the Puppet People, I would expect some kind of attack at some point. Sergeant Patterson comes over and starts poking around a bit. So Fran starts to worry that the police are getting too close and that he's going to get caught. So he comes up with this illusion. It's much better that we all meet death together than for any one of us to be left alone. Okay, so the solution is that everybody dies so that you don't have to be alone? Hello? Dude, you created a shrinking ray. Seems like quite the scientific achievement that could bring you a lot of attention. And if you could reverse it so that it enlarges things, you would have more friends than you could possibly imagine. You'd be rolling in money and admiration for the rest of your life. So Franz takes them all to the theater and gets them to perform Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with the marionette, because I'm sure this is how they want to spend their final moments, taking direction from a psychopath on how to act with a puppet. You're more convincing, dear. Try it again. You know I love you. Why can't you be kind to me? I mean, why even do anything? What's he gonna do, kill you? I'm pretty sure that's already a big part of the plan for the evening. So why do anything that he wants you to do? If I was in this situation, I would probably drop trow right then and there and just take a dump on the stage. Like, there you go. How you like that? How's that? How's that for convincing? Finally, Bob jumps in there and he's like, screw this. You like puppets? Well, how about I beat the shit out of this one? Then the lights go out and they all make a run for it. By the time Franz gets back to the workshop, Sally and Bob have used the ray gun to return to their normal size. And here we go, the confrontation we've all been waiting for. I bet you can't wait to see what they do to this guy. Come on, Come on Sally, we'll call the police. Yep, that's it. Franz is all alone again, and Sally and Bob are gonna tell the police about how he's been shrinking people. Kind of a lackluster ending. I mean, we don't even see what happens to the others. It just goes to a shot of the empty tubes and says, the end. All right, can I give you my ending for this movie? Let me pitch you my ending. Franz comes back to the workshop. Sally distracts him while Bob sneaks up from behind and chokes him out. Fade to black, fade back in. We see Franz standing alone and then the camera pulls back to reveal that he has been shrunk down and is in a tube in the display case all by himself. Bob and Sally leave, but not before locking the door and hanging up a sign that says, sorry, we're closed. The end. And if you really want to jazz it up a bit, uh, we start to see some flames get bigger and bigger through the window. <laughs> Now, like I said at the beginning, this title is kind of misleading. I mean, there was never really any attack of the puppet people. And look at this poster. They're fighting a dog with a knife? 
This never happened. So the original title for this movie was actually the Fantastic Puppet People, but they changed it to try and appeal more to teenagers who I'm sure after seeing this movie were left pretty disappointed. I will say that I think they did a really good job at making the people appear small in this movie. The split screen and the props were pretty well done considering when this was made. Ultimately, this is a really sad story about the fear of being abandoned. And I think we all know who to blame for that. Acrobats. I mean, that's really what started this whole thing. If it wasn't for the acrobat, Franz's wife never would have left him and he never would have invented the shrinking ray in order to kidnap people. But that's pretty much it for this one. As usual, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you all next time. And you know what? I hear people complaining about how the toys that come in these boxes aren't very good. What, what is wrong with our society? It's a free toy. Who cares how lame it is? Well, what do you want? You want to reach in there and, and pull out a rock? Would, would you rather have that? Or how about a, a, a handful of gravel? Would you like that? Would you like a handful of gravel? Do you want to chew on some gravel? Yeah, I didn't think so. I think we're pretty lucky that we get anything at all. Because Cracker Jack doesn't owe us jack shit. Well, they don't. So the next day, Bob comes back to talk to Franz and holy crap, look, there's a mailman, there's a mailman hanging on his door. If there was a mailman hanging on his door, I think that would be, uh, well, that'd be a much different movie. This is one of those movies where there wasn't a ton of material that was obvious that I could make jokes with. There was some, but it wasn't chock full. So I was kind of like, all right, you know, I gotta, <laughs> I guess I gotta really work on this one. Some of the boys, some of the